If you enjoy what you hear here today, please consider supporting me on my Patreon page. Every dollar helps, and you get to see content that you won't see here. Chapter 18, No Man's Land, Part 2 I still can't believe they just gave my clothes to her. I seethed. The hospital was a bust. Apparently, Twilight beat me to the chase and grabbed my remaining clothes days ago. Why the hospital staff decided it was a good idea to give my clothes away to anyone but me went right over my head. Maybe she was going to return them to you, just waiting for the right time, Lyra offered. She did her best to counsel both sides. I was keeping a level enough head on the outside, but she knew the thoughts going on inside. The staff had either been too embarrassed or too nervous to give an answer up front, stumbling over their own words as they tried to explain. I was more than thankful that Lyra was able to coerce the explanation out. My nerves had been on edge the moment the hospital came into view, and being inside only brought back more unsettling memories I wouldn't have been near as patient. Pfft. Oh please, that's a laugh, I scoffed. That pony has been a pain in my side ever since I stepped foot in this town. I winced, realizing how much venom I let slip into that word. Lyra seemed to notice, and she didn't look happy. I snapped the rubber band against my wrist again with a grimace. <sighs> look, we don't have to see her today, Lyra huffed. Heck, maybe you don't have to see her at all. I'll talk to her about this and get your clothes back for you. No, you're not doing this for me, too. I sighed. We paused at a store, and I rested my back against the wall, allowing myself to slide down into the street. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just... just a little stressed, I confessed. A faint snort escaped me as I corrected myself. <laughs> Alright, very stressed. The hospital was hard enough as it is. Seeing Twilight 2 and on the same day... <sighs> my fingers ran through my hair and cradled the back of my head. Lyra's expression softened and she joined me in the dirt, sitting close to my side. I know you didn't mean anything by it, she said softly. I'm sure things are still a little hard. I can't imagine what this all must be like for you. I shook my head. It just all felt so surreal. I could feel myself shaking when we walked through the doors. I thought I was going to wake up in that basement again like... Like everything that's happened these last few days was... Oh, just a dream. She said nothing, allowing me to speak my thoughts. But when my words stopped coming, she shifted closer, leaning against me slightly. It was comforting and I felt myself relax. With a deep breath, I closed my eyes and rested my head against the wall, exhaling slowly. <sighs> Kinda wish Redheart was there, I eventually said. I still need to apologize to her. I think I know where she lives if you wanna stop by. Lyra offered, looking up to me. I hesitated. A small pit was forming in my chest, quickly filling with dread. A part of me wanted to get it over with, like ripping off a bandage, but another feared the encounter. The reason I wanted to see my old nurse was the same reason I wanted to avoid her. Guilt. Maybe later, I said quietly. A few seconds passed before she nudged me, and she gave me a small grin. Hey, wanna just head back home? She asked. You know, just go back and skip the rest of the day. We still have some leftover cookies. I snorted. <laughs> I don't think cookies is the answer to every problem. I joked. Well, not with that attitude. She countered with a sly half-smile. We chuckled lightly. The offer was tempting. I was finally back at ease, or as at ease as I could get at the moment, at least. But I still had work to do. Maybe Twilight could wait for another day. I could hold out a little longer without my jacket and shoes. I remembered what the mayor said about the school books, though, 
and the library didn't sound like a bad idea. It wouldn't hurt to have something to study and keep my mind off of things, and it was a good enough excuse to avoid Twilight while still doing something productive. <sighs> Let's stop by the library first, I suggested. Lyra pulled back and looked at me in surprise. Really? She asked. Yeah, I need to grab some books anyways. Might as well knock that one out. I stood and stretched my legs. The library wasn't too far away, just a few minutes of walking. I'm kinda surprised, Lyra chirped happily as she joined me. In a good way, she clarified. I know you have some bad memories there, but it's good that you're trying to get over them. Yeah, well, it's not like there's much to do here anyways, I chuckled. <laughs> no internet, no television, no phones, I listed off on my fingers. Lyra raised an eyebrow, which only made my smile that little bit broader. Teasing her with human words that she didn't know was becoming a fun, small pastime for me. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be visiting the library a lot. I'm curious what kind of stories there are in a world where magic isn't just a fantasy. <laughs> I snorted. I'm sure some of your history books might be more interesting than some of my world's fiction. Oh, if you're looking for something good, I know a few books that'll hook you. Lyra pitched in. That familiar tree from my first night eventually came into view as we traded stories from our worlds. Lyra's words were drowning out to memories of midnight storms as we drew closer. I never would have guessed that it was a library all along. I mean, true, it was large, and I never got a look at the inside. A good look, really, but it was still a tree. I always imagined it was something like Zakora's hut. Something in the back of my head tugged at me to turn and walk away, and I had to remind it that it was that night only. The odds of any of those mares being in the library again were slim to none. And who knew, maybe the library would be friendly. I had never known a bad one. I hesitated at the small, simple door, staring at the handle. Despite the cool breeze, small beads of sweat trailed down my brow and palms. Ira reached up and knocked on the door. I gave her a curious look. What? She asked innocently. Uh, isn't this a public library? I asked. Oh yeah, but it's also her home, she said dismissively. She nudged my leg and grinned. I'm really proud of you, by the way, she added. I know you said you didn't want to do this earlier, but it's good you're taking these steps. Before I could ask her what she meant, the door opened. A small, vaguely familiar lizard opened and stood on the other side, looking at me with wide eyes. No, a dragon, I corrected myself, remembering the fire. Oh, uh, hey, Hunter. He scratched the back of his head and looked anxiously back inside. It is Hunter, right? He asked with an uneasy smile. Yeah, I nodded, struggling with my memories. And it's Spike? He grinned approvingly. So, what brings you here? He asked, looking between us. We're looking for some books to rent, Lyra said. School books, mostly, I specified. Oh, well, come on in, he urged, holding the door open invitingly. We stepped inside, and I took a second to take in the room. The whole tree was hollowed out, making ample room for the full bookshelves carved into the walls. I was surprised that the tree still looked alive outside, but well, then I remembered. Magic. A wooden bust of a horse's head rested on a pedestal in the middle with a few open books. A staircase hugged the back wall, leading higher up to the branches. Here, let me go get Twilight. She knows where everything is. Spike scampered to the back and ascended the flight of stairs, calling her name as he disappeared. My heart froze as the pieces fell together and I turned on the spot and moved to the door. Come on, I hissed to Lyra under my breath. What? She asked incredulously. Whoa, whoa, hey! She grabbed at my left wrist and tugged, causing me to jerk to a halt. The rubber band wrapped tightly around my wrist glowed in magical light. Lyra offered an apologetic smile and released me, and a restrained shudder came over me. Sorry. Where are you going, though? Didn't you want to see Twilight? Of course I didn't. 
Why would I want... Welcome to the Golden Oaks Library. Twilight chirped as she followed Spike down the stairs. We don't usually get customers, but I'm sure we can help you with whatever you... Her voice trailed off as our eyes met. The room fell silent as we each held our own breaths. Twilight was the first to crack, vanishing behind a flash of sparks. There was a soft pop higher up in the tree. Spike looked between us and the source of the noise and chuckled nervously. <laughs> I'll be right back, he promised and scurried past us and ran up the stairs. All right, let's split, I whispered, leaning down and pushing Lyra to the door. What? No, what's gotten into you? She demanded, digging her hooves into the hardwood floor. Why are you changing your mind all of a sudden? I thought you wanted to come to the library. Yeah, and that was before I found out Twilight lived here. I pointed out, giving her a harder push. Lyra stumbled forward a few steps before finding purchase on the doorway and braced herself against me. How did you not know that? She hissed. Lyra, I've lived here for four days. I strained as I pushed against her. I don't know where anybody in this town lives except for you and Applejack. It was clear she wasn't going to budge. and With a groan of defeat, I laid off, retreating a few steps from Lyra and letting her compose herself. Why are you doing this? I hissed, crossing my arms. You know what she did to me. She opened her mouth to speak, but only a sigh escaped at first. Look, I know you don't like her, she started. And honestly, she's hurt me too. It's going to be hard to forgive her, but Fluttershy's worried about her. About most of her friends, really. If you think I'm just going to brush everything she did under the rug... I interjected. I don't, she confessed. But this tension between you two is going to get out of hoof if you don't find some closure. I've already spoken to her. She hesitated, looking up further in the tree where Twilight had run away to. Things aren't ever going to be the same between us. We used to be friends, but now... She shook her head, not wanting to admit the word she was about to say. I don't care if you two become friends, she said, looking back to me. Hey, I'd be surprised if you ever do. But you can't keep bottling up this tension. Sooner or later, it's going to break. And it'll be easier on every pony if you settle this now before any pony gets caught in the crossfire. A series of hoof steps announced Spike and Twilight's descent and the latter had a forced smile plastered on her face. Faint beads of sweat formed on her brow as her eyes looked just past me. I went rigid and forced a smile of my own, watching a spike led Twilight before us. There was that tension again, hanging over us as we stared anxiously at each other. Spike was the one who braved to break the silence. So, uh, what brought you guys here again? He asked. Oh god, this was a mistake. Look at her, just... Standing there. I could see the restraint in her eyes as we stared each other down. I imagine she wanted nothing more than to run or, or scream. Maybe both. Just like me. We're here looking for some books. Lyra answered for me. She left it open for me to explain, but my jaw was clenched tight. Twilight's ears flicked at Lyra's voice, but other than that, she showed no signs of acknowledgement. A few uncomfortable seconds ticked by. What kind of books? Spike pressed. Lyra looked up to me hopefully, and when I didn't answer, she huffed and prodded my leg. Oh, for Celestia's sake, Hunter, I'm not playing your messenger. <sighs> School books, I said, releasing the breath I was holding. Calculus and physics, mostly. Twilight blinked in shock. Calculus? Spike nudged her side, egging her to keep talking. Why do you need a calculus book? She asked carefully. Lyra and Spike shared an excited look between each other. I'm still in school back home, I explained. 
We were working on derivatives in class, and I don't know if literally falling off the face of the earth will be a good enough excuse for my teacher. I surprised myself with a short chuckle. <laughs> you know how they can be. Twilight actually smiled. I didn't think you'd still be in school, or that you had school for that matter. She added sheepishly before wincing away from the look I gave her. Here, let me get those books for you. Oh, I'll get them, Spike exclaimed. Don't worry, we rearranged the bookshelves last week. I still remember where they are. I'll go with you, I offered. Oh, don't you worry about that, Lyra interjected slyly, trotting after Spike. I'll be sure he finds the right stuff. I watched in disbelief as the two left us, sharing a hopeful look with each other. Why those conniving? Twilight coughed, returning my attention to her. So, uh, calculus, huh? That's a pretty advanced subject. It's more of a prerequisite, really, I explained, folding my arms. My eyes followed my friend as she disappeared following the dragon. Surely it wouldn't take them too long. I noticed my foot was impatiently tapping the floor. A uh, prerequisite for what? She pressed. My jaw clenched to bite back a groan. College classes. You are going to go to a college? She asked in disbelief. You sound real surprised that I was trying to get an education. I shot. Twilight retreated a step, rubbing her foreleg as she tried to not look at me. Yeah, I was. I well, still am. I corrected myself. It's just going to take a while to readjust to everything when I get back after... Well, after all this. I gesture to nothing in particular. I would bet. Twilight nodded. Our land seems so different from one another. Something about her words sounded... Off. And she caught on to my skepticism. I've been studying your clothes... She explained nervously. They seem to share that same unique property as you when it comes to magic. I can only assume everything else from wherever you're from is the same. She paused, searching for a response, although the look I gave her probably wasn't what she was expecting. Purely for research purposes, Twilight assured me. After, well, everything happened, I still had so many questions. And I didn't want to bother you for any more samples, so I... Where are my clothes? Twilight blinked, surprised at my interruption. Through her grit teeth, she managed to press a smile. I don't think you understand. Your clothes are made of rare materials. Rare materials? I echoed. They're made of cloth, with rubber on the soles and a bit of metal on the zipper. But they're not magical, she stressed. Or they don't have magic in them, rather. Don't you know what that means? This could open up a whole new realm of possibilities for the studies of magic. If somebody were to somehow replicate this, I don't care if you found the cure to the common cold in them. I interjected. The wind is near freezing outside, and I've been walking barefoot so much for the last few days that my feet are raw. Whoa, whoa, simmer down, you two. Lyra and Spike got between me and Twilight and tugged us apart. That didn't sound like closure, Lyra hissed under her breath. What happened? Pfft, Twilight's trying to keep me from my own clothes, I said, glaring accusingly at the mare. It, it's not like that, Twilight tried to defend herself, looking between our arbiters. His clothes have a powerful magic, I mean, a powerful not magic, I mean, yeah. She shook her head. I just need to understand how. Twilight, Spike complained. He crossed his arms and gave her a disapproving look. Did you forget what the princess said? No, she sputtered. I was just trying to... I didn't mean to... She looked between him and Lyra, and when it became clear that she was alone in her argument, she grit her teeth and a small groan just barely slipped out. <laughs> Fine. She spat, disappearing in another flash of sparks. The sound of hooves trotting sounded beneath us as Twilight ascended from the basement, this time with a blanket holding my clothes resting on her back. 
the blanket magically lifted by its corners, floating across the room to rest at my feet. I knelt down to inspect the contents. Jacket, check. Socks, check. Shoes, check. Hatchet, check. I threw my jacket on, thankful for the small sense of comfort it gave as it wrapped around me. The socks and shoes could wait until we left. I didn't want to be here any longer than I had to. <sighs> Thanks for the help, Lyra nodded. She motioned to the book in her hoof. How much do we owe you for the book? Don't worry about it, Twilight sighed. Hardly any pony visits enough for this place to be a practical business. I know you'll bring them back when you're done. Lyra nodded in appreciation, but Twilight's eyes lingered as I inspected my hatchet. Uh, I don't suppose I can convince you to at least leave the axe with me? She asked hopefully. This was the last thing my father gave me before I was torn away from my family. I said quietly. There were a few chips in the wooden handle, and the blade looked more worn than I remembered. Then again, maybe it had been too long since I had seen it. You're not keeping this. Twilight flinched as if I had struck her. She rubbed her foreleg and looked away. It was nice seeing you again, Lyra, she murmured. Lyra took the cue and tugged at my arm. Yeah, you too. Come on, Hunter. I ducked beneath the doorway behind Lyra, pausing just outside to put on my socks and shoes. I sat against the trunk of the large tree as I worked, and Lyra waited patiently with a joyless look in her eyes as she flipped through the pages of the levitating book. I think I'm ready to take you up on that offer, I finally said as I laced my shoes. Go back and skip the rest of the day with a plate full of cookies, right? Lyra chuckled half-heartedly, and the book floated back into her hoof. <laughs> yeah. She nodded. This has been a long day. Eyes followed us as we walked through the town. Well, followed me, really. As I looked over the hatchet in my hands, I found that most ponies were fixated on that, a hint of fear lining their stares. I gave it a quick twirl in my hand. Integrating to the Ponyville lifestyle would be more difficult if everyone thought I was carrying a weapon. It didn't exactly scream normal to carry it around all the time, either. Still, it was comforting, holding it again. Like I'd collected the last piece of my former self and finally came back together, became whole. I was sure Lyra wouldn't mind me storing it in our room. It's not like I brought anything before when I moved in. Maybe I could put it on the dresser on my side. The house came into view just down the road. And already the stress of the day seemed to melt away. No more hospitals. No more libraries. I could probably get to work on teaching myself calculus. I smiled. I was probably the only person in the world, or worlds, I supposed, willing to make my own homework and do it during an extended vacation. <laughs> Man, my friends would laugh me out of town back home if they ever found out. What? Hunter! Duck! What? Something heavy slammed into my head, sending me face first into the dirt road. Whatever it was quickly scrambled off of from on top of me and lifted. Oops, are you okay? Two pairs of hooves helped me pull up, and my assailant gave me an apologetic smile as she hovered in the air. I didn't hit you too hard, did I? Man, this is the third time this week. I groaned, massaging my head. I glanced at the mailbag slung over her shoulder. <sighs> Didn't you already deliver the mail this morning? Our mail mare gave me an apologetic chuckle and rubbed the back of her head. Yeah, but I was told this was important, she explained. To be delivered ASAP. She reached her hoof into her bag, going into a lazy somersault as she bent over, but she didn't even really seem to notice. She let out a small cheer as she fished out her prize, a small envelope addressed to Lyra. With a small wave, she fluttered away, tripping over our mailbox mid-air in the process. I winced, leaning into Lyra. She seems a little... Derpy? I was going to say ditzy. I shrugged. 
Lyra's letter floated in her magical grasp. And she already opened it and was pouring into each word, an excited grin threatening to show. So, what you get? I was answered with an ear-splitting shriek of delight. <laughs> I've been accepted to play in the New Year's Masquerade! She squealed. My ears were ringing, but I didn't let that put down the mood. Um, that's great, Lyra. Congratulations on... Uh... She didn't seem to hear me, though, and was too busy prancing around me with the biggest grin on her face that I had ever seen. <laughs> so, what is that, anyway? I tried to ask. I need to top on bun! She exclaimed, the words nearly stumbling out. She raced into the house, throwing open the door in the process and leaving me in my confused daze. Excited chatter slipped out from inside, followed by a duet of shrieks. I shook my head in wonder. Despite my ignorance, I still couldn't help but feel happy for her, for whatever it was that just happened to her. I took in a breath of the nice, calm air and entered the house, eager to fall under this contagious excitement.